Well, of course, I'm gutted. Um, you know, it's only two hours ago the rig came down, and uh, I've been busy clearing it up. I don't think it's really uh, sunk in yet. That, uh, well, that the race is over for me. So, uh, um, very disappointing, but uh, I really don't know what I could have done. I was pretty much, uh, um, I was going nicely, and then a squall uh, much bigger than the, the basic wind that uh, came along, and there was no real chance to do anything. Um, I've actually got a little uh, plot of it on the screen if you want to see it. On this plot you can see uh, the top line there is true wind speed and you can see it was nice and level and suddenly uh, well actually whatever broke broke at 49 knots and you can see uh, everything just goes haywire that's what uh, that's what a mast failure looks like and it just seems uh, you know desperately cruel uh, sometimes things go really well and and you're the hero, and the next minute you lose your rig, and you're the zero. The sport is tough, but the Vendée's uh, a whole new level of difficulty, and you know it just seems uh, a bit odd that it's a freak, uh, a freak weather event that, that uh, should take me out of the race, and particularly just at the point where we're leading. You know, so after weeks and even months of work uh, to to get to the lead spot and not do it uh, at a mad pace. Uh, the boat was in good order and um, I mean the master didn't fail because anything broke I don't think. Uh, I think uh, it failed simply because it was overloaded. It's only two hours ago since it happened or not even uh, I've just uh, Cut the rig away and uh, made myself some food and uh, made a few phone calls and you know, I'm sort of normally heading north uh, northeast at the moment. Uh, I'm planning uh, uh, to set up a jury rig with the boom and I've got about 1,500 miles of sailing to get me anywhere, whether I choose uh, Perth, Adelaide, uh, Hobart, uh, they're all roughly equidistant. The weather will dictate where I aim for.